cross drainage structure cross drainage structure is like just like a bridge we construct a bridge to pass uh, people or cars above a canal uh, stream or river just like that the cross drainage structure is constructed to pass a water a, ca a canal over a drainage line hello assalamu alaikum today's our topic is cross drainage structure structure to understand its concept its types and how to solve first like watch the complete video cross drainage structure is just like a bridge for example if there is a canal canal or we can say the stream or river for example this is our canal or stream river following in either direction and uh, we need to cross this canal we usually construct a bridge to pass it but there are certain cases that uh, for example we have this canal and uh, this need to cross a drainage line now how will these two water will cross each other this is the question and its answer is simple cross drainage structure cross drainage structures are the structures provided at the transition points where a drainage line or a canal line crosses each other where two water flows crosses each other at a right right angle or at another angle but it's supposed to cross each other <laughs> so this is about this topic now you have completely understood that what actually is a cross drainage structure is just a it is a crossing to pass a canal over a drain okay there are total three types of uh, there are total three types of cross drainage structures three types of cross drainage structures and uh, the first type is this in which canal crosses over a drainage for example this is our cross drainage structure if it's a plan view this is our canal and this is our drainage now if we uh, see this figure from this side okay so i will see this is canals full supply level this is its bed level okay and it is a canal crossing a drainage line for example this is drainage line this is bed level of drainage line this is full supply level full supply level means even at maximum conditions the water will be at this level and as this is a cross section of this will be shown in this figure now this is my bed level of a canal so i will make this figure a bit I'll, uh, this make up my drainage line this become my canal now this bed level of canal and this is is full supply level of canal and this is for drainage okay now this drainage can be of different purpose either it is coming from fields to drain excess amount of water or it is from city for the sanitary purposes or rain water and canal water is usually for irrigation purposes okay for example if this canal is crossing over a drainage line there are three types of cross drainage structure first comes 
when a canal is causing a drainage over a drainage okay like this for example this is drain uh, drainage and this is shown here as well okay now this bed level this is full supply level and this above structure for example this which is crossing like this so i am showing its cross section as i am watching this from this side okay so i can see that i can simply see that uh, this is bed level of canal and this is full supply level of canal okay so this is a for example so so a structure constructed so that a canal can cross over a drainage means above the drainage okay for example this is now i am showing it with just one line okay this is our canal and this drainage will cross it like for example this no not like this as above it okay above means this canal is above the drainage line then this is the first type of cross drainage structure and usually at the structure which crosses over a drainage line is known as a aqueduct a q u e d u c t it's usually aqueduct okay and now this one under canal crossing under a drainage line canal crossing under a drainage line for example now this is the reverse of aqueduct or canal crossing over a drainage for example this is our drainage line this is our drainage line now canal crossing under a drainage line so my canal line will be here okay now this is my side view if i see it from top then my top view will be for example this is my drainage line okay and drainage line above this drainage line above and canal line is crossing below for example this is my flow and this is my this flow so canal is crossing below the drainage line and the structure which passes below the drainage line is known as siphon siphon s i p h o n s i p h o n now aqueduct canal crossing over a drainage siphon is a structure canal crossing under a drainage and third is known as level crossing okay the third is known as level crossing means both the canal and drainage are at the same level so we provide the level crossing now understanding all these types a little bit more for example a canal uh, we will discuss all these types step by step in this video i am only going to teach canal crossing over a drainage its types and one working problem so for canal crossing over a drainage we actually have two types for canal crossing over a drainage only this one we have two types the first is known as simple aqueduct <coughs> two types the first is known as simple aqueduct simple aqueduct 
and the second is known as siphon aqueduct now when we provide simple aqueduct and when we provide siphon aqueduct now <coughs> under the understand this simple concept now for example uh, i will make it a little bit small now for example i knew that canal cross my i'm uh, learn we are learning the type canal crossing over a drainage so i know my for example my drainage is this um drainage is this for example this is flowing in this way and it is over a drainage so my drainage line is this one this may be running in this direction okay so so this is my drainage line this is my canal line. okay so now if i can watch this figure from this direction i will have a figure like this for example this is my drainage line okay and now these two lines of only drainage this is showing bad level this is showing full supply level means the maximum height the drainage height of water the, the drainage can achieve and it's above is now in a cross section i can only see about this okay now this level is bad level of drainage bad level of canal and this level is full supply level of canal <coughs> okay now we will understand when we will provide simple aqueduct and when we will provide siphon aqueduct okay so so when the bed level of canal when the bed level of canal for example this one when the bed level of canal is higher than the full supply level of drainage we provide simple aqueduct once again when the bed level of canal when the bed level of canal is higher than the full supply level of drainage we provide simple aqueduct now there might be a case when we actually have this bed level uh, at here for example now this is my bed level of canal okay so when when the full supply level of drainage is greater than the bed level of canal we provide siphon aqueduct okay the concept is a bit clear now once again i will repeat for example when the bed level of canal is higher than the full supply level of canal of drainage we provide simple aqueduct okay when the full supply level of drainage is greater than the now when the full supply now when the uh, bed level of the canal is greater than the i will repeat it once again <coughs> when the uh, when the bed level of canal is greater than the full supply le level of drainage we provide simple aqueduct or when and when the full supply level of drainage is greater than the bed level of canal we provide siphon aqueduct so there are these are two types uh, the definition of aqueduct can be 
द स्ट्रक्चर विच इनेबल्स अ कैनाल टू क्रॉस ओवर एंड नदर कैनाल अ नेचुरल ड्रेन और अ डिप्रेशन इस कॉल इन एक्विडक्ट देर मे बी टू टाइप्स दिस सिंपल एंड सिफोन एक्विडक्ट नाउ टू राइट अबाउट दिस एक्विडक्ट्स वी कैन सिंपली से दैट इट इज जस्ट लाइक अ ब्रिज द ओनली डिफरेंस दिस इज दैट a bridge crosses people and vehicles but a uh, aqueduct crosses water canal water so this is the major difference now coming towards our question of how to design a an aqueduct How to design an aqueduct? We are given a question. A distributary canal is to grow be crossed a branch canal. Prepare hydraulic design of an aqueduct with the following data. Now we are already given in this question that design an aqueduct. Okay, so we knew that we have to cross the canal water over a drainage line. Okay. In this type of question, initially we will draw the draw a figure of using this data, using this and this data, we will draw a cross section, <coughs> finding that what is the full supply and bed level of branch canal and branch canal, and what is the full supply and bed level of distributary canal. Now. Initially, I will there are branch canal, distributary canal. So initially, I will check what will be at the uh, which one has the lowest bed level. Now this is bed level. So initially, you just need to see the bed level. So looking at this bed level one zero four one zero seven. So I will choose branch level because bed level is smaller. Okay. So for my bed level. So branch can the bed level of branch canal is one zero. For example, this line. Okay. Or the figure I can make it into the center like this. For example, this is my no. This is my bed level of. I can show here. This is the sign to show my. I can show this. This is my bed level of canal. And this is. One zero four point nine, and it's in meters. Don't 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 need to mention it. And uh, the full supply level of uh, branch canal is one zero six. It is here one zero six point nine zero. So this is the full supply level. You can draw the figure like this. <coughs> And this sign to show that here the full supply level is one zero six point nine. Full supply level of canal. Okay. Now the distributary distributary area as the bed level is um the bed level is at. One zero seven and one zero seven is above one zero six point nine, so I can show one zero seven is about here. One zero seven point seven one meter. So this is my bed level of distributary. Okay, and my full supply level is about here, and it is. Full supply level of distributary is one zero nine point five. Okay, this is the first figure will which will give us a a general idea of the problem. Now I knew that my. Uh, 
distributary is above the canal so I need to pass the distributary with an aqueduct and the aqueduct would be a simple aqueduct as I explained earlier as the bed level of distributary is greater than the full supply level of canal now initially you need to understand for example the cross section of an aqueduct looks like this one for example this is my canal okay and this is my distributary when these will cross each other the shape will not look like this actually the shape will be for example this is coming like this the shape will be like this the length is shortened when these both will cross each other the distribution canal ok so we can say that at this cross section these both are crossing each other and their length is getting shorter so now initially first we will <coughs> design or we can say that we will check the branch canal properties or branch canal so initially we will design or we will check few things in branch canal ok now we can actually see that when the my branch canal is this ok and my distributary is this um, so in my branch canal we can see that the length is sh shortening so according to theory the length is about 40% shorter ok so my length in this problem I have been given that bed width is 18.3 meter so my new bed width will be new width or reduced width will be equal to 18.3 as I told you that about 40% of the length will be reduced so it will be 1 minus 0.4 as 40% is reduced so will minus 100% minus 40% so 60% is left so I, either I will multiply with 60% or I will show the this that how I am getting this as well so my length is approximately 11 meter ok now <coughs> uh, you have you definitely have watched bridges how bridges are made now for example take a for example this is uh, this is a bridge that is crossing the canal ok now suppose you are standing at this point and you are watching this bridge like from this point ok so what you will see you will see a bridge it's standing on piers ok piers or columns and water is crossing from these piers like this ok so actually the whole width of the canal is divided into spans likewise in this design of uh, aqueduct the branch canal is at bottom so branch canal will be divided into spans and these spans are we, we divided in three spans width in 
you can say that divide in three spans means divide in three spans okay so my if i divide 11 by 3 so my length will be remain about approximately about 3.7 meter okay now i knew that if i provided the piers there will be thickness of piers as well to divide into three spans i require two piers in between so the whole width will be equal to 11 plus two times the thickness of pier we usually take about 0 0.8 0 0.8 meter the thickness of one pier so my whole length will be about 1.6 and 12.6 meter so this is my total width okay and well my width is always 11 meter for the discharge and this is my 12.6 total width okay now my discharge for discharge for branch canal is 20 cubics okay so discharge per unit will width will become means q will be equal to discharge per unit width now this width is for just water so for water we have only 11 meter and 20 by 11 we have 1.82 cubics per meter 1.82 mix per meter discharge per unit width <laughs> now we need to calculate the critical depth and my critical depth is there is a, there is a formula critical depth is equal to 3 radical q square by g this is the formula to find out I now knew that g is equal to 9.8 q is equal to 1.82 and 3 I knew so I get an answer of 0 0.7 meter here here I will recheck my answer it's uh, q square means 1.82 square multiply by 1.82 divided by 9.8 and power 1 by 3 means 0.33 0 0.69 okay so I checked this because I have to show you that you might get it a bit wrong because 3 is in this power it is not square root it is power 1 by 3 root okay you can always write this formula as like this one power 1 by 3 okay after you have find out the critical depth you need to remember whatever critical depth you get you will assume a depth greater than the critical depth so your assumed depth will become your assumed assumed depth will become uh, in meters we take zero uh, uh, a depth about 0.4 meter greater so if we have a critical depth of 0 meter we assume our depth is equal to 0 0.4 if we have 0 
zero so we'll assume will be zero point seven plus zero point four is equal to one point one meter of depth is assumed depth. So according to this, my assumed bed level will be full supply level minus assumed depth d assumed so according to this my full supply level is equal to 106.43 so 106.43 minus 1.1 .1, i got my answer 105.33 meter and my actual bed level is 104.9 so my actual is actual bed level is 104.9 so we will take the value which is smaller of these two assume bed level and actual bed level we will take the value which uh, the one which is smaller or lower so we have this actual bed levels so we are taking our actual bed level we will adopt so we can say that adopt bed level is equal to 104.9 meter okay now this is just a design for branch canal we will now design our distributary canal or our aqueduct so it is time for designing of our aqueduct so I can write here as my distributary canal okay distributary canal the one which is crossing over the branch canal so my in this I knew my bed level is one one zero seven point seven one meter now as we are constructing a for example a we are constructing a bridge so definitely the bridge will contain a assume as a slab a deck we usually call it a deck so this deck will be or the slab will be will have a thickness so now this is my bed level my thickness will be thickness of slab will be about we take about 0 0.5 meter okay so my bottom of uh, structure we usually call this bottom of trough this surface is known as trough because trough is a structure over which canal water passes a V type shape or etc so bottom of trough will be equal to 107.71 minus 0.5 so this will be the bottom level of trough and it is about 107.21 meter um, after I get my bottom level I will check if my bottom bottom level is above the full supply level of uh, branch canal or not 
so to check this i knew my full supply level of branch canal is 106.9 so i can say that my bottom of trough is above it but i will also write here after subtracting 107.21 minus 106.43 now I know that my the distributory canal is 0 0.78 time 0 0.78 meter above the full supply level of branch canal. Now the depth of distributory canal. Now the depth of this, uh, this distributary canal, the depth of this distributary canal will be equal to, now this can be easily find out using this data. If I just subtract the full supply level and bed level, the full supply level and bed level of distributary canal, I can get my depth for distributory canal after I subtract both of these I got my depth is equal to about 1.34 1.34 meter <coughs> now now as I already showed you here that the width of uh, uh, canal and distributary both will be reduced likewise if we have find out the depth so the width will be now the width of this aqueduct will be 30 percent shorter so we have the width of distributed canal original is 130 meter so if we will reduce it about 30 percent then uh, it will be approximately about uh, 9.1 or I can make it a 9.1 or 9.25 meter ok I I make it a little a bit larger or greater ok now width is 9.25 meter and uh, my discharge after I have find out my BED it's time for my the discharge of this aqueduct now this above aqueduct is designed for always worst conditions so th we will design our aqueduct for the discharge which will be about greater than the discharge which actual channel is carrying for example so we will actually design our aqueduct having discharge 10% greater than the discharge actually it's only so the discharge over aqueduct is no uh, distributor is 10 cubics it is written here 10 cubics so we are going to make it 10% greater so my discharge will be become 10 plus 10% of this discharge okay 10% okay so the 10% of this will become about uh, 10 plus 10 of 1 11 cubic 11 cubic so this, this will be my discharge now actually I am uh, trying to find out my velocity velocity the formula of velocity is 1 over n r power 2 by 3 and s power 1 by 2 ok so <coughs> so for this I have s given in question and I will assume that my n is 0 0.014 this is 
for country kit section now i don't have r so initially i will find out my r if i have a b and d i can easily find out my r so i knew that my r is equal to a over b hydraulic mean depth area over perimeter area is equal to bd at it is we are designing a rectangular channel we knew that area is equal to b into d so my b is 9.25 multiplied by d is 1.34 my perimeter will be equal to b plus 2 twice d so my perimeter is equal to b plus twice d is equal to 7.93 you can always calculate this as this video is getting larger so i am trying to make it a bit shorter by directly using the values and telling you the formulas okay, so i got my r for r i have area is equal to b into d and for perimeter i have formula b plus twice d and i got my r and i knew for n is equal to 0 0.014 0 0.014 for concrete okay and uh, now I have this formula so I can apply this formula okay I have S is given in, in the question I have S given in this question as 1 ratio triple 6 it is written here slope is equal to 1 ratio of triple 6 for the distributory canal so, so I can apply this formula always so I got my velocity from here I am writing this value directly I have showed you everything required so I got my velocity using this formula is equal to 0.92 meter per second <laughs> now i will find out my design discharge for my design discharge design discharge is equal to a into b so i know area is equal to b into d and velocity i know this so i find out my discharge that this aqueduct can carry is equal to 11.91 qmx now this 11.91 qmx is greater than the discharge of our uh, distributory canal okay so we can say that this is adequate now this was the whole procedure for for designing of an aqueduct now i will draw a figure through which you can get a bit of understanding of what we have actually designed okay so I am uh, drawing this figure here now for example I we have constructed an a distributory canal like this this is the cross section of a or aqueduct for distributory canal and its bottom level means this level is at 107.21 and this level uh, bed level is 107.71 and full supply level means this one is at 109.05 okay this is full supply level of our aqueduct and about here okay here is the full supply level of branch canal it is 106.43 now if I will draw the cross section of my branch canal it will be like this for example there the whole width is divided into three spans so two pairs and three spans one span two span 
third span okay these are two piers of 0 0.8 meter width okay so this is my bed level and it is at 104.9 meter full supply level for example my full supply level is at this and full supply level is 106.43 Okay, and uh, my above it is as I have sh shown you a cross section of aqueduct. Now this is the side view of an aqueduct. This is the bottom and this is the bare level of distributory and this is the full supply supply level. Okay, and it's another cross section of top view will be like this okay this is the whole procedure of solving of uh, the design problem of an aqueduct now this problem as shown here can also come in foot per second I will not so uh, I will not solve this problem in units of fit and uh, Q6 this might come in your final papers either in civil commission or in another case you can always visit the webs the website given below in the description where you can find out the solution of the same type of problem with different units for example this is in meter this will be in fit for that what will be the width of the canal how many sections we are going to divide everything will be a bit changed so you can always watch you always visit that website that is given in the description if you have understood this these concepts i have uh, given you in this <coughs> video like share subscribe and comment below thank you